All right, let's go over this first quilt we're going to work on. They have a little blurb if you want to pause the video and read it uh, about this quilt. This is going to finish up to be about a king size quilt and is going to require six and a half yards of white, five and a half yards of green, one and a half yards of dark red, seven eighths yards dark pink, three fourths yards medium pink, and a bunch of backing. It's going to be fun. I then shopped my stash and bought what I didn't have currently sitting in my closet. This quilt also comes with templates for applique. I traced my cutting forms with some form plastic so I could get all of these lovely shapes to cut out. Once I had my plastic pieces cut out, I started working on my fabric. The hardest thing to work on and cut was this little irregular E shape, which are part of the flowers on the end bits. Getting those perfect was not fun. It was not fun at all. Overall, I was asked to cut 48 leaves that look like this, 240 of these little leaves, which I added a little extra shape to so they weren't just round and boring. Some of them are a little more angular, others are round, because we don't look for perfection in quilts, we look for happy little accidents. 68 of these in red, 68 of these in pink, and 12 of these three pieces of fabric that make our center flower. They will sit on top of it like this so that it actually looks like a pretty little flower and not just random bits of fabric. All of these tiny little pieces will form 12 blocks on a white background to create these shapes. When it's done, they create little circles around themselves to create inside patterns. So hopefully after piecing properly together, they will look like this. Tomorrow I will show you how I start putting the pieces onto the white background and how I get them to stick long enough for me to sew them into place. Hint, it involves glue sticks. We're going back to kindergarten. All right, let's talk about how I get the little applique pieces to stick on the fabric. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white fabric and cut out 12 20 and a half inch squares for my background fabric. Once I have my 20 and a half inch squares, I start to fold them into little triangles. I know this seems weird, but just stick with me for a second. Once I have my 20 and a half inch squares folded into these triangles, I press them and you can either press them by hand or you can cheat and use an iron. <laughs> the iron's faster. <laughs> and you'll see why in a second. Now you see on my squares, I have a lovely grid pattern that I can go off of. Kind of like this grid right here that the book shows you. This is also the moment when I kind of freaked out because I have forgotten that I need to cut my stems as I go because they want you to cut on this bias. I hate cutting on the bias because every time I do I end up getting my fingers somehow so wish me luck. Next is the part where I haphazardly throw all of my pieces onto the square to make sure that I have all of the pieces readily available. This next part is also the part where I figure out what I need to start gluing down first and what needs to go in what order. The first trial block is always a menace and is kind of touch and go, but once I figure it out after this block, the rest of the blocks follow easily into place. In this pattern, I want to glue my leaves down first. I kind of put them in the general area of where I want them and kind of straighten them out to my lines before putting the flower on top. Once my flower's on top, I will begin to move the leaves around to their preferred areas where I will get ready to glue them. Once I like my setup, I'm going to steal my flower back. Once my flower's taken off, I'm going to peel up the bottom edges and glue them down with a little bit of purple Elmer's glue. This stuff dries clear, so I don't worry about it staining the fabric below. And I'll just repeat that for the rest of the leaves. After the leaves are done, I'm going to work on the next layer, the next layer, and the next layer. 
I'm going to let those layers dry and while they are drying I'm going to work on cutting more pieces and stitching some of my other blocks. I'm not saying that my chickens and ducks are a little too um, domesticated. I'm just saying I have like 50 lap chickens. Lots of lap chickens. Am I sorry? No. No, I'm not. I get lots and lots of chicken cuddles. Be jealous of the chicken cuddles. Having to puppies in the house be like. I'm a peekaboo shark. Come out and get peek me. Peekaboo, I'd bite you. Nom, 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 nom. I will eat you. I'm having husky for breakfast. Yay, right. There is no way you can beat me. I am the mighty son of Odin. More like tiny shrimp. You are so rude. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a bun hiding in a hay pile. normal dog that likes to stay inside during winter storms. Snow puppies that never want to come inside during snowstorms. The beans are starting to open their eyes. This is Kit. This is Sai. This is Chester. Great job, Mama. We are down to once a day weights. So I know you were worried about Sai yesterday. So while I was getting weights this morning, I decided to pull him out and brush some of the fluff off of his eyes so that you could see that he's doing just fine. He looks like he's going to have gray eyes, which is on par for chocolates in this breed. But he's a little sleepy head right now, and he would prefer to sleep than keep his eyes open. But Sai is doing great, and as always, I appreciate anyone who has any concern for the beans or any of my other bunnies. As somebody who raises horses, I can't believe you would say something like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, uh, my neighbor called and my mare got out for the sixth time this week. And um, if I don't get out, she's going to get into somebody's brain. Pain. So I can't believe you would say something like that about my horses. But that's not how this happened. This is Steve Jr. He is my best friend. Steve Sr. died in the back of my fridge molding. Poor Steve Sr. He gave me a lot of food from his flesh. But now I have Steve Jr. I feed him twice a day and he feeds me at least once a day and we make all the breads. All the breads. Chanda, we gotta go potty. You can't make me. It's cold outside. I am 70 years old, don't tell me what to do. There better be a treat. I'm going to show you my second favorite part of raising rabbits, other than the baby rabbits themselves. When mama has to hide from the babies and she just jumps up on the nesting box just not wanting to deal with them. It is just so cute. And I love it. Even though Blue is a lovely mama. Everyone needs a break every now and then, you know? And for her, it's on top of the nesting box. Away from the itty bitty babies. <laughs> 